welcome. Bienvenidos to Elecciones 2018. I'm Elizabeth Ortega Lomayer, your host and producer. Tonight you'll have a chance to hear and meet William Jaguando, candidate for County Council at Large, and Santiago David Tavara, writer, editor, and reporter in the metropolitan area. Will, what makes you the most qualified candidate in the race among 37 under candidates? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me, and thank you for keeping working with us as we tried to schedule, so thank you very <laughs> much. Um, so there's actually, there's 33 Democrats, you know, and but I know that with the other candidates there's more. Um, and I think I'm unique for a couple of reasons. Uh, the theme of our campaign is something I call the Montgomery County Promise, and I, I define that as a great school no matter where you live, uh, a safe neighborhood that has access to good transit um, and green space and parks, uh, a, a place where you can work a job that pays a living wage, um, and a place that you can afford to live, whether you're a new family moving here for the first time or whether you're a senior trying to stay here after you've contributed. And that's really, that promise is what brought my parents here. My dad came from Nigeria fleeing the Civil War. My mom from Kansas seeking economic opportunities, a uh, white woman from Kansas. And I grew up in Long Branch, very low income neighborhood, heavily immigrant. Uh, and uh, a couple of apartments down from the Flower Branch apartments that blew up two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the unique thing about me to answer your question is that I have real, real life experience about what it is to grow up here and benefit from the great things that we have here, but also see the disparities. You know, I, I, I watched downtown Silver Spring develop while, my, while I lived in an apartment that wasn't maintained well, you know. And so I've seen the both sides. I went to a school that didn't have the resource it needs, but also was able to navigate the system and do well and earn scholarships to college and law school and become a lawyer. Um, so I've seen kind of both sides and I think that's unique. We need people in policy that know the good and the bad and the ugly. Um, and then I've spent my whole life working on trying to make those things better. So whether it's, I know we'll talk about this later, but whether working in the Obama White House, helping to pass health care, uh, helping to pass uh, the Affordable Care Act, helping to pass the Lilly Ledbetter Equal Pay Act, and I was counsel on the U.S. Senate Education Committee for six years. So I've worked on policy at the national, state, and local level, but I've also lived that policy as a, you know, growing up here um, as a low income. Why do you think Latinos should vote for you? Yeah, because I think we have a shared experience. Um, as you know, like Long Branch, when I was growing up there in the 80s, it was, our, it was still, there was a good mix of African immigrant, African American, and Latinos. You didn't get, it ha you hadn't had the big, influx from South America yet, which happened, you know, late 80s, early 90s, uh, when you had the, the, the wars down there. Um, but I grew up in a heavily immigrant neighborhood. Um, I understand those issues. I grew up in Quebec Terrace, if you know where that is. Yeah, and, I know. And, uh, <laughs> I and, know too. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so one, I think I have that shared experience of growing up son of an immigrant. But two, um, I know that we're better when we all do well. You know, and that's what I've dedicated my life to. How do we make sure people have good jobs? We're a welcoming community. Uh, you know, as a civil rights lawyer, I've been working to defend people's rights, whether it's whether it's making sure that we stay safe, we don't aren't dealing with federal immigration laws, and we're keeping ourselves welcoming. Whether it's language access, making sure county services are available to everybody, and uh, so I think I'm an ally on those issues. I just was endorsed by Casa de Maryland, um, which I'm a, I'm proud of. Um, and uh, I think that speaks to my record and my, and my work with, with immigrant communities and the Latino community. So I think that's, those are some, some of the reasons. And habla un poquito español? Un poquito. Mm -hmm. With your help, uh, <laughs> ayúdame, you know, help me. Uh, work, I'm working on it. Um, and my daughters are better than me. You know? Oh, she speaks better? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes. Santiago. What are you planning if you're elected day one? you have a specific proposal or something to bring to the table? Well, there's a lot we need to do. Um, but if I had to pick one thing that I want to work on right away, it's uh, making sure that early childhood education and pre-K are available to all kids. Um, as you all probably know, we have over 2,000 new students entering in MCPS each year. Most of those kids are low income. Most of them speak English as a second language. Um, and most of them are black or brown. And we're not doing what we can to prepare those students to start day one. So 
the average child, I have three daughters, seven, five, and four. Average child care for uh, uh, one month for high quality is $2,000 per child per month. And so you, people can't afford that. So what's happening is you have students starting in kindergarten at age five, and they, they've heard millions less words than their kids that have been in early childhood. So they start already in an achievement and an opportunity gap. So if we, we need to provide subsidies for zero to three year olds, anyone so that everyone can afford to send their kids to a safe early childhood setting. Um, it also will create some jobs. There's all these informal networks of child care, many in the Latino community where people are providing abuelas and things are providing care. How can we bring them and bring them into the network and create a, a set of jobs from that in an economy? Um, and then we need to provide universal pre-K for all four year olds so the kids are, are ready to learn. So there's many other things we need to do, but that's something I want to push right away because the financial strain and the achievement gap implications of that are just are really hurting us. And because we're growing so fast, if we don't address it, it's going to become more and more of a problem. How are you going to pay for this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, there are budget cuts maybe, you know, and yeah. how, how you want to increase the you know, revenue? So I'm going to answer that, but the first thing I'll say is that we have to pay for it because if we don't pay for it now, we're going to pay for it later. Uh, and what I mean by that is... It's, if, and it will cost more, probably. It, exactly. You know, and, and, if, and the research shows us for every dollar you put into early childhood education, you get $8 back in return. And you're not paying for juvenile justice or criminal justice or remediation. Uh, and, or, and so, one, it's a good investment. But two, we, it is going to cost something. So uh, whether we need to... Uh, look at additional revenues. You know, there's been some proposals. Do we put a tax on, on soda cans or sugar and, you know, a couple cents? Or do you, uh, can we reorganize the government to get some savings? Or, you know, can we, hopefully we get a new governor and we can get some state money? You know, I, so I don't want to nail myself down on a specific proposal, but what I'm telling you is that we have to do it because we're, we're going to pay way more on the back end and the schools are not going to be what they should be if we don't make the investment up front. What about endorsement? You got Casa Merina. What else? Who else? That's the most important one, you know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, why, why Casa endorse you? What, what do you think? You know, uh, because I think, and I shared this in my interview, you know, I grew up right where Casa is. You know, like, you know, they're right down the street in, you know, in, in uh, Langley Park there. And uh, I have that experience growing up. My dad had a heavy accent, couldn't get jobs, was discriminated against. Um, you know, had trouble, even though he had a good education. And so just, I think one is my personal life experience. Um, but two, you know, I've worked, I know policy, right? And I, I have a dedication to the things that help people move up the economic ladder. What's the American dream if not moving here? You come from somewhere else because you want better opportunity here. And you try to get a good job and work hard and move up the ladder. And that's what I've done as a lawyer. And so I think Gustavo and the, and the great people of Casa who interviewed me, uh, saw that I really care about those things, and I'm really going to be a fighter for immigrants, for working people, and and that's and, and all my endorsements to your other question yes. mm -hmm. are from organizations that are representing working people. So you know, of, of all the 33 people running, I have more endorsements from the labor labor unions and progressive support than anyone else. Uh, we've had uh, McGeo, which are our county employees, uh, SEIU, who are our para educators, our bus drivers, our food service janitors in the schools. Uh, Layuna, who are our laborers who pick up our trash here in Montgomery County, uh, Progressive Maryland, uh, and also the Sierra Club, uh, because I'm big on the environmental. I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and one of the things I told the Sierra Club is that if we're going to really grow the environmental movement, we have to have people of color and low-income people involved. And right now, it's it's mostly a white movement. And uh, and not only it well, does that movement need it, there's also great green jobs. You know, if we could get people re retrofitting houses and uh, doing composting and understanding that there's economic benefit from getting off the grid and getting solar, uh, there's that could actually help low-income people uh, save money, and so and help our environment. So um, I've been big on. I was proud to get their endorsement. Um, we also were endorsed by. Um, uh, who am I missing? Yes, yes, there's so there's a lot of them. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You're showing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So SEIU. Yeah, I'll show you guys my 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 beautiful family. There you go. There we are. But uh, there's actually more than this now. Yeah, teachers union. Um, the Apple Ballot because of my dedication on education. Montgomery so, County Education. Yeah. Yeah, Montgomery County Education Association. Um, the teachers. So I'm proud of our endorsements. Uh, 
And like I said, that's the most of all 33 candidates. And I think that says a lot in a big field of, you know, really good people. Uh, this is not the first time you're running. This is, yeah. I was reading that this is the third uh, election in four third years. Third time's the charm. Third time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. Mark, Mark Helvich, right? Yeah, he did four. It was, it oh, was he four did four? four. Oh, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what lessons have you learned so far? Uh, um, are you confident you're going to win? You're going to make it this time? Or? I, you know, I feel really good. Uh, you know, we're working so hard. Um, you know, look, a lot of people that have been successful lost, you know, and and the thing about when you lose a specific lesson, you have to learn from it and you keep trying. Um, you know, I can go back. Abraham Lincoln, he lost so many times. Not that I'm Abraham Lincoln, but <laughs> lost a lot. Barack Obama got beat in his first race. Uh, we mentioned Mark Elridge. He ran four times. Rashern Baker, the Prince George's County exec Executive, ran four times before he won. Um, and so I've learned each time. And the, and the unique thing is each time I've run, I've run to represent the same co community of people that I grew up in. So when I ran for state house in, in uh, 2014 for District 20, that's Tacoma Park and Silver Spring. That was where I grew up in Long Branch and in other places. When I ran for the Congress, it still covered that same area. And politics is nothing if it's not opportunity. You know, it, you have to have preparation, meeting opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't win those races. We, the first one I lost by less than 1%. Oh. Uh, by a couple hundred votes. The second one was the most expensive congressional race. You remember David Trone and spent yeah. $14 million. It was a crazy race. But we still came in four out of nine. I was the only African American. I was the youngest person by 20 years. And that got people to know me, too, a little more, too. So I think when you're talking about a race now with 33 people, you know, name ID is important. Like, who have you heard my name before? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Have you heard it? You know, that helps. And so... And we've learned, I've talked to so many people, there's so many people that have helped. We have hundreds of volunteers that I've met over the past four years that are sticking with us and helping out. So so I, I, I don't see them as losses, I see as them as you know stepping stones. You've, you've worked with people. And in the, all in the meantime, it's not like I've just been running elections, I've been working in the community. Last year I ran the largest summer jobs program in the county's history. Uh, it's called Summer Rise, Real Interesting Summer Experience. And we had over a thousand uh, MCPS juniors and seniors, uh, many of them Latino students, who applied to have a three-week career opportunity in the summer, and they got paid. They had a professionalism training, um, and I was able to place over 400 of them in great jobs. You know, Metamune, Pepco, CVS Pharmacy. So, I've been working in the community. Those each time we've learned more, but we've also uh, got our name ID up too, which I think helps in a race like this where there's 33 people. But that'd be tough to compete with other Democrats. You know, it is good for uh, democracy because we we see you know only Democrats similar ideas. What makes you confident yeah. to be you know thirty eight or thirty three? Yeah, 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 Democrats. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually think it is good. You know, four years ago we had low turnout. That's one of the reasons mm -hmm. we lost the governor's race. Um, a lot of people didn't come out. They weren't excited um, because of you know the horrible president we have right now and. Uh, there's a lot of people that want to, in the term limits and public financing, there's a lot of people that are running. I think that's good for democracy because if it drives up turnout, I think that's a good thing. I and think it is a good yeah, thing. Yeah. Tell us about your uh, education and um, your career as an attorney. Sure, sure. So, uh, how far back do you want me to go? Like uh, elementary well, school? Well, in two minutes. <laughs> in two minutes, all right. You went one. Yeah, so I, I was born. And then, uh, no, I, early on I went to MCPS. I went to Oakview Elementary and, you know, in that area of Long Branch and all that. And then I um, uh, had some time in Catholic school. Uh, went to St. John's High School on a scholarship. Uh, and, then Saint, and then went to Catholic University for undergrad and law school. And the unique thing, when I was in high school, I lost one of my best friends to gun violence, unfortunately. Um, and it really was another moment for me that was a stark uh, contrast. I said, well, why is my friend dead and I'm at a private school? And I really saw that there was different pathways of opportunity in this county. But um, so I went to Catholic University. Uh, while I was there, I majored in sociology. Uh, I also founded the first ever chapter of the NAACP at Catholic. Um, and we did that so we could organize for the uh, rights of the workers at the university who were being treated poorly. Um, and we won, the, the, the university denied that chapter, but we actually had to protest for six months and got the chapter. Um, and that was my first kind of social activism and uh, how I learned that. And then I interned on Capitol Hill, you know, so I worked uh, for Nancy Pelosi uh, as an intern and then they hired me and then I worked for Senator Obama. 
Uh, and I started to see how all the policies connected and how policy really had an impact on people's lives in a big way. And I knew if I was going to help communities like Long Branch, like where I grew up, I was going to have to make sure I knew how to work policy. And that's what really drew me to going to law school and becoming a lawyer and really working my whole life, you know, uh, on the on the Hill and then uh, as a lawyer and then in the White House, Obama White House and Department of Education. Uh, and then I did spend two years at Discovery Communications when I left the White House, um, working on education issues as well and government affairs. But, you know, so I that's kind of my real quick snapshot. I've done some other things. Now I, I'm a consultant. I consult mostly on policy, education policy and workforce policy. As I mentioned, I just ran the Summer Rise program last year. Um, and, and I think if we're going to help communities go up the economic ladder, education and, and workforce opportunities are going to do it. And so that's why I focused on that for most of my career. And someone, someone in the county council or in the county executive or the governor or someone has to fix the situation in Montgomery County that we have beautiful places, beautiful, gorgeous places, expensive ones. Mm -hmm. um, but then we have very poor areas, yeah. like the Long Branch, like the Piney Branch yeah. building that uh, went on fire and killed so many people. So how should we solve this? Uh, yeah. I'm not an attorney, I'm no, not no, a no, politician. No. Well, we all have a role to play, and it's not a, it's not an easy thing to solve overnight because there are reasons that this this exists, right? You know, one thing, first thing we have to do is recognize that it's a problem, right? I think there's some people that think it's a bad thing to talk about it, you know, and and to say that we have two Montgomery counties or that we have some people that are doing really well and some people aren't, they like to say, oh no, Montgomery County's great, you know. So yes. so I think that's number one. You have to be honest. Mm -hmm. Number two, once you're honest, then you have to say, okay, well, how do we address historic inequities, you know, because there were reasons that people of color and poor people were put in different places, you know, whether it was redlining, we could only live in certain places, they didn't allow us to live in other places. And for example, there were laws against that. Um, and so we need to have corrective measures. And so one of the things I think we can do is make sure that the places that are most economically impacted, like Long Branch and like East County and like parts of Gaithersburg and other places, is that we make sure we invest additional resources in those communities. So for example, if you have a school where most of the kids are low income and a lot of them speak English as a second language, they should have extra supports. You know, they should have more paraeducators, they should have more after school programs uh, because we know kids can learn if you give them the right supports, no matter what their poverty level. Um, so that's, that's one example. They should have the highest qualified and the most experienced teachers um, and they should have a diverse, uh, uh, set of administrators and teachers as well that reflect the, the student body. Um, and then we should do things like preparing our kids for the jobs of the future. So there are 30,000 jobs in Montgomery County right now, electrician, plumber, uh, auto mechanic, IT uh, specialist, that are unfilled because they can't find people to go into them. And these are good paying jobs. And one of the things my proposals is we need to totally revamp our career and technical education programs. Um, there are 48,000 high school students in the county. I think we, and, and there's only one career technical education high school. Uh, that's about half full. Um, so we need to create pathways with Montgomery College and with our uh, employers to these jobs that are good paying jobs. Um, then we need to, uh, you know, make sure when we do land use and zoning and we build housing, that we make sure that we hold developers accountable, that we make sure it's quality housing. Those people smelled gas for months. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and with the apartments I grew up in were not good when I grew up there. And so how do we make sure we're building good housing that's affordable, but also is safe and clean and um, in all parts of the county? You can't just put people in one part of the county. So you need mixed income housing everywhere, whether it's Bethesda, Silver Spring, Briggs, Cheney, Gaithersburg. You need to have mixed income because when people are together, that's when there's going to be more accountability. I think right now we're very segregated. You know, to your point. And so yeah. it's easy when you're segregated to say, oh, okay, well, that's them over there. But when we're all together, it's harder to do that. So there's a lot of things we need to do. It's a multifaceted thing. But um, I, you know, I think having people on the council that really understand it, have lived it, will be a big start because, right, we don't really have a lot of that. And um, I think that'll be helpful now when we're going to have five of the 10 people who decide all these things are going to be new county executive and at least four county council. So I think we have an opportunity now to do that. 
to, to make the change. Yeah. Um, I want I want to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know your name before. Yeah, that's I okay. never heard about you before. Sure, sure. And that tells you something about sure. other people in the county. Yeah. I went to El Salvador with Lisa Martin. Yes. And she kept talking about my friend who is running for office and she mentioned your name. So this time when I wanted to do the interviews of candidates, yeah. I remember your name and that's why I invited you. I'm gonna have to thank Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, but also when people go to vote, they tend to remember names. They yeah. don't know the candidates. Yeah. And they may know one or two, but they don't remember candidates. So what would you tell people now about how to decide on who, who, to, who to vote? Yeah. Well, I would say it's hard because you have to, it's a lot, but I would say look at the record of what people have done. Um, look at their background and experience. Um, look at their dedication to the community. It's a big county, right? So with 1.1 million people, that it's a challenge. And in, in I was in Damascus yesterday, you know, those, that's a totally different place than, mm -hmm. than here in Rockville or in Silver Spring. And so... Uh, it's a challenge to get around to everyone, but I'm, we're working hard to do that. Um, and I would say, look at the record. The good thing is, because we're doing public financing and we've been at near the top of that, and because of the endorsements, I think that'll help us get our name out. Um, but look at the endorsing organizations. If you think the Sierra Club's a good organization, look at why they endorse me or other people. You know, If you think CASA's a good, they're working hard, look at why they endorse me or the other. I think those help. And then, uh, and then read the websites and see if those people line up with you. And then, you know, I think it's on the candidates to reach out to as many people as possible. You know, we're trying to do that. It's hard. It's a big community. Um, but, uh, you know, that's the good thing about public financing is that it, it rewards people for having small group meetings and getting small contributions as opposed to, you know, if you under the traditional financing system, you're calling rich people and just asking them for money. So. I, it, it, I would say look at the qualifications, look at their commitment to the community, look at their endorsements, look at their diversity. You know, I think diversity is so important right now. I think uh, we need to have people that reflect what our community is, which is a majority community of color now. Um, and I'm running right now to be only the second person of color ever to represent the whole county. And the first was Ike Leggett, who's retiring. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was in 1986 when he ran for this position 32 years ago for at-large council. And we haven't had one since. And we have an opportunity with me, we have an opportunity with some of the Latino candidates running. Uh, it would be great if we could get one or more, you know, several of those on to be more reflective of the diversity in, in, the, in the county, so. We have one more minute. Yeah. And I would like you to give your um, website address. And if you have one little question, then. Yes, a question on your experience in the sure. working in the Obama administration yes. the program. And also, I saw the story in the New York Times. Oh, yes. Still inequality, you know. Obama had been, you know, in office for eight years. Yeah. He promised hope. At the end, you know, still, can you comment on this article and also on your work sure. with the Obama yeah. government? I was proud to work with the President Obama. You know, I think anytime you have the first of anything, you had, you know, you had 43 white men and then him. You know, it's hard. <laughs> you know, you can't change everything overnight, but I think he, he did some good things like Affordable Care Act uh, and, uh, like DACA and, and some other things. Mm -hmm. But uh, this New York Times article showed in real terms that if, if you're a white person, you have a much greater opportunity to earn more money than people of color. And particularly, you know, young black men and, uh, and, and also young Latinos, to, there's a big income gap, you know, in, in most of the country. And, and a lot of that's due to racism and discrimination that's still here. And so I think that this showed it in real terms. It looked at IRS data and tax data. And so Montgomery County is not immune. We have a lot of work to do here. Um, and uh, so that's, I have to get my website address, I think. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> I want to work on all those things. I appreciate you all take listening and giving me the time. Uh, my website is willjawando.com. And Jawando is spelled J-A-W-A-N-D-O. So willjawando.com. Uh, and I'm Will Jawando on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So thank you. And please uh, vote for me. <laughs> Thank you to both of you and all our friends in Facebook for joining us tonight. We'll see you again next week. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Adios.